All right, welcome back to the second segment of Community Tapestry. And if you're just joining us by chance, I'm Napoleon Bell, and I'm the Executive Director with the City of Columbus Community Relations Commission. And to my left is... Not the Executive Director of the Community... No, I'm... There you go. <laughs> there you go, Bell. exactly. And it's nice to be back. Thank you. Well, you know, we, we've got a, a, a lighter segment this, this, on this segment, and, you know, and for some reason it makes me want to get up and act. I want to be <laughs> a performer. You know, you I, I'm are. feeling pretty, pretty good about myself. I, from practicing my little bit of singing to do the X Factor piece. Oh yeah, do you do the A E I O U A R U B A? No, I don't do that. Okay. I don't do that. Whatever she was saying. <laughs> but you know, your face tight. A great thing about this, though, is that we're, we're going to be speaking with people, uh, some some young people, uh, should I say, that are part of the children's uh, Columbus Children's Theater, mm -hmm. and have, are going to talk to us about how it happens and about, you know, although I might be a little too old to get involved right now. Hey, are you young at heart? I am young then at heart. Then you are always then we young. Then we can do this. So we're going to find right. out more the about song, it. So forever young. Let's start talking about let's do it. the let's Columbus do it. Children's we've got Theater. we two amazing people that we are going yes. to introduce. Exactly. So let's, let's get to it. To my left, I have the production manager of the Columbus Children's Theater, Mr. Chris Rusin. Thanks for having me. Great. Glad you'd be here. And, you know, a longtime friend, I would say, because he's been on the show you know, at least 10, 15 times in the past. Uh, and every time you've kept them to yourself because exactly I haven't had right. those interviews. Exactly right. Exactly right. you keeping her all those times? Well, sometimes we've got to keep her under control, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you are the artistic director of 26 years, Mr. Bill Goldsmith. Yes, uh, I've been there a while, and uh, it's been a pleasure every minute of it. Well, we, we want to find out about every minute of it because this is, I think, you know, one of those, um, I, I, don't, I don't want to say best kept secret because people know about it, but we want to make sure that more people know about it and how they can get involved, especially with our young people mm -hmm. nowadays. So let, let me just first, you know, go, go to you, Bill, about really about, tell us about the theater, how this all started, and, and, and who's getting engaged with this? Because it's, it's, it helps out a lot of young people. Okay, we're a very, uh, we're a major institution. We're 51 years old. Started out as an academy, really. It's called Columbus Junior Theater of the Arts back then. In 1963, it was founded. And it was classes of varying, all arts classes, art and dance and music. And, and it evolved into a theater organization over the years. We have three major programs. We have a performance series, which we're mostly known for, which is professional theater for families. Now, you are wrong in the sense that you're too old because we mm. do cast adults in all the adult roles in our oh, shows. Oh, okay. I'm good. So we cast and you young... didn't say old people in all no, the adult people, no. right? You just said adults. 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 See? Yes, but we do you. cast young people in all the youth roles. Uh, so if there is a youth actor, they play the part. Mm -hmm. So that means that young actors are getting a chance to work in a professional environment and increase their skills and, and uh, get an introduction, introduction to the craft in a professional fashion. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we've worked with many, many young people that have gone on Broadway. We have two people on Broadway right now. Really? Josh Radner, How I Met Your Mother, was uh, played a dwarf for me, was in a few shows uh, at Children's Theater. So there's an opportunity for anyone, open auditions, and that's, that's what we're most known for, because it's most visible. Okay. But we're also, we have an academy, teaches classes that's starting at three years old, um, my parent and me kind of classes, all the way up through high school and college prep courses, year-round, multiple locations, all kinds of classes, acting on camera. There's also behind-the-scenes camera uh, training, so oh, wow. you can learn how to do that, what these guys over here are doing. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then we have a professional touring company. That's four full-time actors. They tour through schools in Ohio, primarily. And we do reach a little bit in the tri-state area. And they reach, they play maybe 250 performances a year in schools bringing theater to schools that may not ever see theater. Mm. Um, small towns, inner cities. Uh, Chris was a member of that touring company for four years. Four years, yep. And uh, so we reach about 120,000 kids in the course of uh, every year. And yet, 51 years old, that many people, and people still don't know we exist. So mm. that's our challenge, always to reach out to those, those new parents to let us know the opportunities that we have at Children's Theater. That's impressive. Well, let's go to Chris. So, Chris Rusin, you you toured with the theater for four years. I did. How did you get your start in? How did you get your love for being a thespian? Um, well, actually, all started back in elementary school. I had some friends on recess who decided that we wanted to do something a little different uh, than playing kickball. So we okay. got together and we did uh, ourselves. We staged "So Long Farewell" from Sound of Music. Okay. Um, and then we performed it for our second grade class. Oh my! And God. it was one of those things. 
I was, I was kind of a shy, awkward kid, and getting up in front of even my class of 25 kids and hearing them clap for us and laugh, it kind of empowered me, made me realize that I could be something bigger than I felt I was at the time. Um, so it all started for me then, and that's part of the reason I have this passion for children's theater, is I want other kids to have that experience. So what did, your, what did your teachers and your parents have to say when you did this first production in second grade? Uh, you know, it, they, were, they were supportive. My parents saw, I have uh, four sisters, and we all kind of, we would listen to Phantom of the Opera, Cats, all the soundtracks, Les Mis. Um, so they kind of saw the, the joy that that brought to us, um, performing those things at home. Um, and, you know, the teachers, they, they, they took time out of class to let us do this. I think they saw how much work we put into it. Um, and I wasn't lucky enough to have an organization like CCT around in the area where I grew up. So it was me and my friends and my family doing these things. And uh, what city did you grow up? I grew up in the Akron area, Fairlawn. Okay. So. So Summit you, County. Yes. Oh, nice. So you like, you know, so growing up then, you this was kind of a natural piece for you. It wasn't that you were scared of being in front of people. You you kind of liked the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the attention and, and, and knew that, that kind of fed off of that. Because I hear several actors say they, or, or even comedians say that they really it's feed like off of the crowd. Yeah, and it's one of those things I always tell our young actors that you're scared up until you get up there and you make your first mistake and you realize that the world didn't end. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you make a mistake, you say, oh, they don't know what I'm supposed to be saying or doing right now. If I don't show them that I just messed up, you move on. And, and there's something empowering about that, too, to say that little mistakes aren't the end of the world. Right. You learn from those things, you adapt, and you move on. So how do you think you're, a, this might be a, a, a much deeper question than we cared to ask, um, but how are you a better person um, because of your involvement with theater? Well, it, A, you form so many lifelong friendships um, in the arts. We were actually just talking earlier about how, what a small community the theater community is nationwide, really. Um, so I have you know friends now all over the country who I'm so close with because we've been through the trauma sometimes and the joy of, of putting together these pieces of art. You also learn a lot about yourself and about the, you know, the human condition. Um, it, doing these shows, you're put into situations that you wouldn't otherwise. In, in college, I did a show where I was um, you know, playing a prisoner in a concentration camp and trying to get into that headspace, understand how awful it was, and knowing that you're nowhere close to that. Mm -hmm. um, exploring these various situations that people have been put in teaches you a lot about how, how good you have it and, and gives you a sort of empathy. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the word I was thinking about. Well, and, and, and jumping back to Bill, I, I, I gotta ask you, because you've been doing this for so long, how how do you get these young people to be able to even grasp that? I mean, I, I'm sh you talk about the different, you have some different classes that, that are set up, but how do you get them to, to think that way? Well, or children are more honest than adults, really. Adults are, are trained not to be honest, whereas young people are honest uh, just, in it, just uh -huh. because that's who they are. And in theater, what is most revealing on stage is honesty. And so if you're honest on stage, you're believable. And that's, the, that's the, the goal in theater, is that any show, you, you want to see that person believe who they are. And then you're, you're in rapture, and you're captured by that moment. And, and with the fact that we are playing to youth audience, or family audiences, mm -hmm. if a child sees a child on stage, and they believe that child, and then they say, wow, maybe I could do that, you know? It empowers the audience as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and to come back to what Chris said about the moment as, as a child and communication, standing in front of an audience, now, just to segue to our academy, we think that every every child should have some theater training, some 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 drama classes, some theater classes, because if you can stand in front of an audience and talk, your communication skills are better, your self-esteem, your ability to talk to, to broad that, that will help you no matter where you go in life, and that we think that's very important for every child to have, have the understanding and that appreciation of standing up there and being able to stay and speak your name in front of a crowd. A lot of people can't even do that. You know? It also reminds me um, that it's important because of planning. Um, it helps children and everybody involved understand that there is more involved in this communication. There's the coordination of the lights, why it's important for you to memorize your yeah. lines, being a part of a team. Um, so, so often the focus is athletics, 
when it comes to school. Mm. Right. Um, you ought to know because you're a big football player. Oh, um, yeah. But for, for little people like me, I had the <laughs> band and occasionally I had theater. I sucked, but I really appreciated the opportunity. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I was much better uh, as part of the chorus or playing in the band. Um, but my big question is, when it comes to education, arts and funding for the arts tends to be the first thing on the chopping block. It is. Um, how are you making an impact on that, knowing that the funding went away at some point and this really not doesn't seem to be coming back right away? Well, the, the, you know, there are, there are organizations out there that simply lobby for the funding of the arts, and, and we support all that we can. When you are a nonprofit receiving funding, you got to be careful about you can't formally promote stuff that's political. Okay. So it's your board that has to step up and, and, and all your members to step up. But you're right, it's the first thing that goes in the schools is the arts and the first thing to go of the arts is theater, typically. Uh, ironically, theater has been shown to be perhaps the most beneficial because it empl employs more levels of the brain, more activity and more interaction. Uh, they've shown, matter of fact, they're out there, recruiters now in the business world are, where I'm told, actually look for people with theater background mm -hmm. because they think out of the box. They're uh -huh. creative. Mm -hmm. They're and not they can just... work on small budgets. <laughs> yes, exactly <laughs> they right. They make big things happen with very, <laughs> with very little, little budget. Very little, a lot with a little, that's right. Yeah, and I actually have to give you an apology, Napoleon, because I certainly didn't mean to imply that because you did sports, you know, I mean, both are I, important. I, I was, it's just I was that... in theater also. We well, wanna, you act, you we act. We want to hear more. Every yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, that's for another segment. Another <laughs> <laughs> Another show, but the bottom line is it certainly teaches you to be a team, but there doesn't tend to be the fund the funding cuts for sports because they generate so much money for schools. Um, and when it comes to arts and funding for the arts, you know, it's the first to go. Yeah. Well, uh, well, let me shift gears here a little bit because I was, you know, I, I wanted to get, get to when you were talking about the young people and and their ability to get there on stage due to, their, due to honesty. Do you... In all the years that you've been doing this, do you see that are the young are they better than you know the adults because they are they are in the moment. Their honesty just is. Are, are, do you see that they're better than the adults? And then have you seen also? You talked about some of the previous act or previous ones who have you seen ones grow up and do some really Pretty great great things. things. Better than the adults, I would uh, I'm sure. There's occasionally a, a, a youth actor that just blows everybody's socks off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's not the norm because they're being trained. Mm -hmm. uh, our goal is to let these young people work with, with trained actors and learn from them and grow from them. But in terms of honesty on stage, a child being honest on stage is much more powerful than an adult, no matter how good they are. You know? mm -hmm. And, and our, all our shows are youth-oriented. So that main character that we're following, we're following that stream. And, and uh, that's the most important person. We want to believe them the most. So, mm -hmm. But to come back to the sports and, and the arts, they're similar in that they both teach a discipline and a commitment uh, that's really important. That you, you come out of either of those, uh, you, you, you're a better person because you're going to devote yourself with energy and focus and discipline that is required in this world. You're going to do better with those skills. Mm. Chris, I got one question for you because you've been recently doing this. How do you memorize your lines? I mean, because I'm thinking, Slowly. you know, well, well, that's the thing. I, 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 I've gone to a couple plays and what have you, and, I, and, I, and they can go through the 15, 20 minutes, you know, worth of just going at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, you know, I might get through the first couple sentences, and they better have a whiteboard up there, you mm -hmm. know, showing them what cards? to say, say next. <laughs> Sometimes you need them. And, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, for me, it's changed a lot. When I was, and you see this with the young people, I, um, I directed a show last year, and uh, the kids had come in to pick up scripts the week before rehearsal started and I had a couple kids that showed up memorized the first day of rehearsal. They are sponges. They absorb things so quickly and I used to be that way and as I've gotten older <laughs> it's uh, gotten tougher. Um, it's, it's, I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> um, it, Everybody has different methods. I always would always tell kids because when we were touring to schools, we do question and answer afterwards, and that was one of the most common wow. questions you get from kids: is how do you remember all that stuff? And it's the same as kids in schools who are trying to memorize spelling lists or, or multiplication tables. It's it's practice, repetition. Um, you know, a lot of it happens in rehearsal. You're going over the scenes as you're trying to learn your blocking, where you're supposed to be. So that helps, um, but it's something you definitely have to pour time into outside of rehearsal as well. Let's see, sometimes that, <laughs> that is would be my my ultimate problem because you know I would be up there trying to memorize the lines, and then if I forgot something, you talk about 
about going for it, I would break out in a cold sweat and just fall out. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to go on. Well, I, that happens to every child. As soon as you walk on stage, you forget. Mm -hmm. People that are nervous, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. As soon as you walk on stage or into it, you've rehearsed that for six weeks. You know, you've mm -hmm. got this so many times, you forget that you're nervous. But those backstage moments behind that curtain before the, before the lights come on. Well, you, yeah. And it, it <laughs> absolutely happens, you know, when, when we're touring a show, we'll, we'll do a show 50, 60 times in a year. And still, show number 47, if you stop being in the moment and stop focusing for a second, you find yourself out there, no idea what you're supposed to do. And that's <laughs> part of where the teamwork comes in. Right. You trust the people up there to help you. Right get out of those situations. That is phenomenal. So, Bill, I want to go to you because you've been, so the theater's been here for 51 years, mm -hmm. but you've been involved for the past 26, and um, I would imagine that where the children's theater was 26 years ago is much different than it is today, yeah. and it probably took tenacity and stern pertinacity to make that, to, to stay, stay the course for so long. Um, tell us about where we were 26 years ago and where you are today. Okay, well, a quick story. When we, I start, the, 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 it was Columbus Junior Theater when I took the job in 1989, and the, uh, the, the didn't have a theater series, so I began that series. I felt a children's theater should be forming, performing children's theater. So there weren't any lights, there weren't any sets, there weren't any. So we kind of created that up with a couple of volunteers, threw up some walls, put some riders in it. Seats didn't match. And the lights were incandescent bulbs, and our, dim our lighting system was household dimmers, 12 of them with sticks. <laughs> and that's how we do it. The lights. Now, that's creative. The, we put, took, took a, a, a coffee can, painted it black, put a bulb in there, put a yoke on it, and hung it so it looked like a light. Uh -huh. And it would, it would do area lighting, so the audience looked up and looked like lights, but they were just <laughs> bulbs, you know. So, so it came a long way. We did a lot with a little. Uh -huh. There was some magic involved doing that because everyone knew, and so we were creating theater, you can do theater anywhere mm -hmm. in a room. We can do theater in this room, you know, you can do it anywhere. So that, that was magical to have that small organization uh, develop. And that, that was a budget of about 110000 and we're now about $1.2 million. And that was two people on staff, and now we have nine full-time staff members and four people on tour. We subcontract oh, 150 artists in terms of the, our, our adults are paid, mm. uh, stipends, not full-time wage. Mm. Um, and we have a, a teaching artists, dozens and dozens of them. So we've, we've, we're, a, we're a major institution now. We, we're, we're a big boy on the block where then we were, we were a nobody, little person. So, it, and I, I say this to, to young people all the time, you know, how do I do this? How do I do this? I say, just do it. There's no magic to it. Yeah. I didn't know how to write a grant. I just did it. There's instructions. You just jump into it and go. Anybody can do it. You know, theater, same thing. How do I start a company? Just do it. You know, don't question. Follow your heart, go for it, and things will happen. You just walk, walk that path and things will come your way. And that's how it happened with us. That's, that's a true success story because when you, when you, I mean, I think even that story is, is one that you'd want to talk to your young people about because just showing that, hey, we started with these little things, you know, and, and, and the fake little cans and this, that, and the other, but look what it's grown into now, and you can do the same thing. If you stick with it, because I think we certainly live in a now-now society right. where there's the immediate reward, Right. And you've proven that you know you start you you start from scratch and you use your own industriousness. Yeah, I was a little worried about today's world where kids are uh, powered to believe that everybody wins, and and I worry about that because there are losers. You know, I mean, you don't always get in a play. Uh, and we, an audition is one of the things we convey to our. We open auditions for everybody. So well, you know, we'll have for Sound and Music, we'll have 100 kids there, mm. and uh, we're not going to cast seven of them. We'd say from the first from the first thing, you know what? Not everybody's going to get cast here. Hmm. Uh, but if you want to be in the theater, this is going to happen. Sometimes you're not going to make it. And you just keep doing it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Keep showing up, and you'll be there. And I've had people audition for me seven, eight, nine times, and then be in, never be in a show, and then four shows in a row. So uh, we, part of our training is to make that clear that, you know, that's the business, you know. Wow. And it's okay. If you're, you may just, you're not, not tall enough for that part this time. Next time you will be, you know. So just right. keep coming. Or a couple lunches. So, so, right. so or just be yourself and be happy with who you yeah, are, and right. there's a role for you at some point. Yeah. So how many how many shows? Okay, so you've got these hundred people um, auditioning for for this particular show. How many how many opportunities? So how many shows do you do uh, a, a year? And so that yeah, would then how many opportunities? Right now. Yeah. We we have we do eight, eight eight productions a year in our main stage series. We do a few shows in the summer. We have one show that is all kids, and that's a summer uh, summer conservatory show. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're going to be doing Zuzical Junior next summer, okay. and we have one 
company that's pre-professional, so it's young adults, they're college kids. And we do major, that's the only adult material we do the whole year. We do a Chicago and Rent. And, uh, but currently, we're, when this will be airing, mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be doing Fancy Nancy, <laughs> Fancy the musical. Nancy. And that's based on the, the books by Jane O'Connor, very popular series of books, huge name. It's really, really fun. A lot of kids on stage, directed by uh, our education director, Ryan Scarlatta. And uh, then we follow up. Our big show of the year is Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Okay. We're, oh, wow. we're performing that at the Lincoln Theater here. Um, and that's, that's a huge production. And so we're going to do it professional. You're going to go, if you come to any of these shows, you're going to get your money's worth. Mm -hmm. And our prices are way lower than you're going to pay for the Broadway series or the professional touring shows. So, but, but, uh, so and we, in between there, we have the Emperor's New Clothes to feature our, our professional touring company, which is very fun. And that's participation theater, so we drag people out of the audience to help tell the story. Oh, and, nice. and it has oh, a special Kristen, fun to are it. Are you in this one? And uh, are you in that one? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> that, you know, that, that, this, this sounds amazing. And, and so, and I, I keep going back to, I'm thinking about the, all these hundred kids that are lined up. Yeah. Um, and only seven of them getting the, you yeah. know, because I want them all to win. Oh, we want to cast them all. You probably want to give everybody a hug. Right. Cast every one okay. of them. Yeah. It's just horrible. You know, we but know it's you're important, gonna, it's an important yeah. life lesson. Yeah, yes. It's an important so, life lesson. So, so, so let me ask you this. So you, you also have then some of, to help those 93 kids um, get additional training. Um, so you have these workshops we that, have, that they can be a part of to We have a to very them. extensive academy, classes of all kinds of shapes, signs and shapes for every level of, of your training. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and they're progressive, so you can even continue to follow that. We have dance classes, we have voice classes, we have acting classes, we have on-camera classes, we have beginning classes for the very young, we're creative drama. We're in, a, in the course of this class, these little kids, four, five, six years old, they create their own little play. Mm -hmm and performance within five weeks in front of an audience of family and friends, which is a win-win. How can they lose, mm -hmm. you know? Everybody let them come out with confidence and self-esteem and communication skills and, and partnering skills and being able to work with a diverse pe group of people. It's all, it's all very, very fun stuff. And I have to say, I'm a, on a personal note, I am a fan of the theater because um, my children, we read The Secret Garden and then you had the play. Um, so it just seeing what you read come to life on stage yeah. It's very different from even reading it and then going to see the movie. It's right. a very different experience. And the same when Stuart Little was coming out, mm. we read the book, you had the play, we came to see the play, and then we got to see the movie. So in that case, we got the whole trifecta of a really good experience. But it makes, it makes what you read come to life. Um, do that, you, do that's you, one of the coolest things about, you know, the touring company in particular, they go out all over the state. And so a lot of places you go to, it's a small town, and that's the only opportunity these kids have to see live theater. Right. You get questions afterwards of, you know, when you guys were doing this thing in the movie, I was like, no, no, <laughs> we're, we've got, I've got the question before, like, are you guys real? <laughs> and just a chance for them to see something that they would never have an opportunity mm -hmm. to see. And, the, the reactions you get from the kids are so genuine. Um, I always tell people I love performing for kids because there's nothing better than the laughter of 400 kids and there's nothing more painful than the silence. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it, it, being able to, to bring our message not just to the kids in, in central Ohio but also all over the state. That's amazing. So where do you see yourself in the next five years? Oh man. Broadway or <laughs> no? <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, Broadway's never been my aspiration. I, I, I love children's theater. Um, you know, I I'm fortunate enough that where I am I'm I'm being able to learn so many things. Um, but I I've always said I want to be an artistic director for a children's theater one day. So Well well let me ask you this. So as production manager, just <laughs> so for us lay people. What's the difference? What well, yeah, what's the difference <laughs> production manager and artistic director? What's, what's well uh, my job is kind of to do whatever it takes to make sure our shows happen on time, on budget, and are the best that they can be artistically. So, you know, on any given day that could mean one of dozens of things, whether it's I'm helping with the lighting, or the challenging, challenges we're having, um, keeping our costumes and props organized, mm -hmm. um, and helping Bill with whatever needs to be done to, to make the shows as good as they can be. That's really great. And, and one of our last Artistic, questions. yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the last questions I have for you, Bill, um, and I'm sorry I got so yeah, excited. Yeah, cut me off. <laughs> you off and what's there your we question? go. I'm, I'm really more interested in the tenacity of 26 years. Why do you do what you do? Oh boy, um, I, I just love it. You know, it's a job. I mean, so many people. And I have colleagues, friends, that are making four times what I make. You know, 
And I, I, I tried once to go out and make money. I was in sales, made, made about four times what I'm making now. Mm -hmm. I hated, so happy with I hated it. it. No, I hated it. I, what I, I, I tell people that, you know, that if you're doing something you love and you spend the majority of your, your life doing work, if you're not doing something you love, then aren't you kind of kidding yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're spending all that time with something you don't like? Uh, money is not going to make you happy. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm doing what I like to do, and, and uh, I have the opportunity to work with young people and watch them grow and offer something positive to their lives and to families, and, and how can I ask for something more than that? It's, right. it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gift, it's a pleasure. Well, I think, and what you both do continues to live on. Because, you know, as, as, as we were in school, we, you know, you'd say that, that favorite teacher that you had, or that one that made that yeah. impression. So you are those two teachers that are making those positive impressions on all these young people that as you get older and as they get older, they will remember both of you. And so I, I think that's where, you know, the fulfillment comes from. Yeah, definitely. Before we leave, can we give uh, contact information? Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> yes. How do we get a hold, how oh, do they great. get a hold of you? When I come to do my auditions, I want to know where I got to go. Okay. <laughs> well, you can find out about everything about the organization by going to ColumbusChildrensTheater.org or just Google Columbus Children's Theater and it'll come up. On there, you can find information on auditions. You can sign up and get a, mail, a contact email, say when there's an audition that's appropriate for your age. You can find out when the shows are. You can find out what the classes are. You can find out what the touring company is and how to book all those. And spend, and our, we're very web friendly, so you can do that. Or you can always call the theater at 614-224-6672 to make reservations for the box office. Uh, one other thing we'd like to mention is we do one event a year that is unique in terms of the arts organization. We do a kid-friendly fundraiser. It's called the Fairytale Ball and Royal Feast. We started this about four years ago, I think, where people can bring their kids wow. to a formal event with a full dinner, entertainment, and, and they can have a chance for them to enjoy a formal dinner. So that's, that's our April 18th at uh, the Athenaeum, and the uh, information is on there, too. And they could call, call the number yeah. also to get more information yes, on Yes, sir. That. Thank you. Well, we'd like to thank both of you. You know, I'm pumped up. I, I, I think I can do this. I think I can do <laughs> you this. Can. You can. All you right. can. You, you must. You can. You must. <laughs> well, we'd certainly like to thank both of you for being here. And to our viewing audience, live, laugh, love, and be involved in theater. You need to have something to brighten your horizons. This is it. This is definitely it. So also, if you want to find out more information about our office, you can give me a call at 645-1993 or check out our website at www.crc.columbus.gov. And also, we're on Facebook at Columbus Community Relations Commission. So once again, thanks both, Thank of, you, thanks both of you. And you'll thanks be seeing, seeing me on the stage right. here very soon. <laughs> right. All right. Have a great week and take care.